Okay, so today what we're getting ready to do is remove the fairing again and tear it completely down so that I can take the inner portions of the fairing and the center console here to be painted body color. The next thing I did to, uh, after putting all the labels on all of the wires, didn't voltmeter, oil, speakers, big connectors, two on both sides of the radio, one up here, one down here, and then um, fuel and air temperature, another speaker, right. cigarette lighter. There's blinker. zip ties in certain areas where they have the big bundles zip tied together. And so what I've done is it goes through this radio chassis so when I cut that, instead of letting this all come apart, I put another zip tie right around the same bundle, just not through the chassis, one here and one here. So now when I cut these, these that go through the chassis, this will still kind of hold itself together. So right, that's what I'm so loosen these up on both the speakers. So I take them off. You want to be careful that you don't snap these here. Hold off all the connectors, uh, with the exception of these large ones here. And I've loosened all these up, so. Uh, when you're pulling off the, the connector on these, these are just an indicator light, and so a lot of times they'll pop out like that, and you can just stick them in there and they just push straight back in. But uh, undoing these, and then aft cage assembly here just comes off, and then the gauges will just push through. through the front. I'll show you, I've got one of these off, the one that was on the left side here. I want to show you how the connector works. This is up against the, the chassis. And when I come in with the screwdriver, I'm coming in between that connector and, and the tab there. And if you come in underneath there, you're going to see that if you, if you stick it in right about to there, let me try and get clearing, see that little triangular tab in there, you're clearing that and then it allows that to actually push up that way and come out. So here's the little tab right here. So when you come in with the with the screwdriver, you're making that up again. Clip clear that little tab. And then it slides forward and out like you saw. Then this thing will be um, attached to the chassis still and you can see it's got a larger hole. It just goes over a little nub in there. I don't know if you'll be able to see that. But right, so you can see everything's kind of starting to pull away here. Um, from the, the fairing and the only thing interfering I should say and the only thing uh, that I did besides that is I tagged um, these with some tabs so you can see which ones go um, above the hook and below the hook so I just tied the ones below uh, and then the rest of the bundle goes above the hook okay so for the speakers the only ones you need to take out are not the, the Phillips screws but the the uh, Torx heads, three of them, after you've taken off uh, this, of course, that nut, but uh, the three Torx heads screws and uh, and the speakers will come come right off and just drop away. And removing the cigarette lighter was very simple. This cover, you hold the front and it just unscrews off of there. I had already unscrewed it, obviously, I couldn't do it with one hand, but unscrew it and then, and then it comes off and then this just pulls out of the other side. The radio, obviously you gotta just pull the antenna straight out. And then you have uh, four screws, uh, Allen head. It just takes some coaxing. And then it just drops back from the inside. Looks like there's a little bit of a gasket here that got peeled back, so fix that. Really the only thing I have left is it looks like the, the four main screws here to remove this whole radio bracket and, and the front bracket that's holding most of the inner cowling on there. Four nuts from this. But now as you look down through here, you can see, so I'm going to point to it here, the plastic nub sticking through right here. So that's going to require a, uh, those are just the push through type right here. 
you just want to be careful and pull it. So I'm going to pull essentially the bracket straight out. It should be loose. You can see the whole the whole fairing moving now. So that's about the only thing holding it on. So there it is. Remove the two screws on each of the uh, the pocket doors so that I can have those separate so, as well. I found out is you gotta pry off this little tab that covers them, and you just want to be careful when you stick your screwdriver in here. You don't mar up the surface. So now it's time to take off the uh, inner console plastic pieces. Obviously, and take out these. So the screws are out here. Use the Harley Torx tool that comes with the bike, and then. Uh, and I pulled out the side ones here. This fits underneath here. If you've ever had it pop out, um, then you're used to it. But as you rotate this forward and pull back, you can see. And then there's the the tab there where it where it slips under. So you just pull that up out of that slot. Now uh, rotate. See. Undo these four Phillips head screws and then unplug the uh, the connectors, marking them if necessary. If they're if they're not obviously. Uh, different types of connectors. So you want to make sure when, you, when you're when you unscrewing these that you protect so that the, uh, the gauge doesn't just fall out onto the tank because it could, when you unscrew it, it could plop out the front and hit your tank. So probably the best thing for me to do at this point in time would be to take something and protect the tank so that nothing can get in there and cause any harm to that paint kind of defeats the purpose as far as this goes I'm going to recommend you look online to some other sites for pulling this out um, I've been <clears throat> messing with it here and um, suffice it to say it's complicated I'm not 100% sure uh, when it's working when it's not but this tab here you can't see because of the Sun is supposed to retract you do it with the key going past to the left past the unlock and you can only do it when this is pressed in so you got to get under there with a screwdriver press that in twist the key left past the unlock and then there's something about which positions it needs to be in when you're doing it and everything else but once you get it it'll pull straight out and once you get it out you use some I use some uh, a crescent wrench to undo this, get it loose and unscrew it, and then this just pulls straight off like that. And then this will probably, looks like it'll slide up as well with a spacer. And you want to keep straight which way they go. There's a lip that rises up on this, and it is at the top edge that you'll lose that orientation once it comes off. So keep that in mind. Same thing with this when it's on there that. Uh, tab goes towards the front edge too. Once you slide this off, it looks to me like these connectors here are all held in by one big channel clip that if I pry this back like that, I should just be able to pull the switches out and leave it in a bit. The uh, cruise is on the left and accessories is on the right. Okay, so it's May 31st. I uh, dropped this off for paint probably about uh, May 2nd or so, I think. Uh, the paint was a little bit of a long lead turn item. Obviously, it needed to come from Harley to be able to be matched, but just picked it up today. Looks awesome. Gonna start putting it together now. Console for the interfering is. Doesn't take long for it to start to look. Like it's going to, uh, you know, start to take its form. It's fantastic. Can't wait to get her done. So right now I'm just putting in the gauges. I already put the speakers in, and uh, I'll fasten the gauges up on the back side. So these are index. They got a notch out of the top here to account for the where the leads come in, and they also have these tangs on here, which helps index the gauge so you get the rotation right. So I just slide it on there and make sure this is seated and come in from the front, line up these screws, and seat it. So now they're all in there and indexed and just ready to have the screws or the nuts put on. 
So I'm actually surprised that these don't have any Loctite on them because pretty much every other bolt and screw on this bike does keep it from vibrating off, but these just go on here, snug them up, I'll hit them with a wrench. Just, uh, just had to go review the video and uh, try to remember which side these went on because uh, these obviously would rotate around and this would be sticking out to the side and you know which side did they go on so if nothing else the video that I have already taken um, even though it's not assembled the raw video has uh, already helped me remember how uh, certain things go back together things that you would think you could remember uh, tend to fade after a month's time so so I'm doing this on a, a blanket, I'm trying to make sure I keep all my tools and stuff over in one location and no screws or anything out here that I'm not using because um, I don't want to be scooting it around and scratch anything up. Right now I'm working on the lids and um, for the for the storage compartment. So I'm going to show you how to put them on. Okay, so the hard part here is getting this spring-loaded part to stay back while you're working on it and not flip up in front of everything and and um, cause it to scratch so I've got it held with one hand and once I get it up in here where it needs to be I'm just gonna push it up against our I've already put the rubber nubs in up here um, it's kind of hard to see this moving around a little bit uh, I've already put the rubber nubs in up here to uh, protect the front of it. And now once I have it in here, just a little bit of pressure like this is, is keeping it right where I need it. So I can come in here with the screws, keep one hand on that, works just fine. To then come in here with the, the nuts and the screws. Once they're started, pretty golden like that, I can let go. the other one and then now that I got them started I just want to look at the make sure it's uh, even up here which appears to be these for me they need to be like pushed almost all the way up to the top of the slot and then just using caution tightening them down so you don't slip off there and scratch the paint. So now all I gotta do is put on these little rubber covers, little plastic covers, and then they'll be good to go. Just put the, um, the edge protectors back on on there and I didn't um, I thought about putting some kind of a glue or an adhesive in there but I actually think I'm gonna let it just go like this because it still holds its shape from being on there previously and I don't want to run the risk of getting any uh, glue or solvents in from the, the glue or the weather strip on. I do want to go ahead and put my switches back inside they were Accessory on the outside, and there we go. And cruise on the inside. Accessory on the outside, cruise on the inside. Nothing nice and easy. Good. All right. So nothing else wires up to this side. We're gonna ease it in here. The thing that gets in the way most here appears to be those things that are uh, that I have put on, such as my ram mounts and uh, and other similar brackets for power outlets or anything like that that you may have added. So put on a little of my red thread locker here. Just not care not to get it on the paint. This one 
the only thing that uh, is going to go in it is the, the reset switch for the odometer. There we go. This has a little plastic nut that goes on there. Cap, twist it around a little, make it actually a little, little slide in there will help out. That's the same thing I did on the little rubber nubs on the that go on the the fairing there for the, the little glove compartments, if you will. Yeah. Round it out of the way of everything. Bring this one in. Get under the cable. And there's little things on these things. It's the uh, front and back, where they interlock with each other. I don't know if you can see that from there. I'm just gonna line them up, slide them together. Now for the a cluster. Again, got my towel on the tank here so I'm not running the risk of damaging anything. Okay, so I've taken this, uh, this was out beforehand, and so I've put it back in. It's got some long tangs on it, make sure it's upright, seated, and then the uh, connector here has a side where it's labeled top. Just make sure that's the side going up. Seat it up against there and then these tabs should just kind of, there we go, latch up against it to hold it in place. Nothing to it. labeled all of these and they should should probably only go in one way but just to be sure it doesn't hurt to uh, to label them I'll make sure I got the wires routed the best way for this way for putting it back together so they don't get all pinched Again, being very careful not to slip out of here and get the paint. Arranging the wires back here, pulling down out here. I need to create a little room. Tipping the front and down. Sliding it down in there, taking care not to pop anything out of place. Bam! That's it. That is it. So the order these came off in. This will fit down in all those holes and probably help hold this front part of the uh, console squeezed together, which is nice. The raised edge on that goes to the front. Has a retainer there to keep it from rotating. We know that this one, that the tab there goes in the front. It's all flush. And then this goes on.
So I'll get my wrench here, my crescent, and snug that up. Okay, so I'm going to do my best to show you this because uh, I have had the opportunity to experiment with it a little bit. First of all, the spring has to stay on there. Um, so like I said, you'll put the key in and it won't rotate left to pass to unlock, of course. But if you push in this little tab right here, then you can rotate it left. And if you do that, you see that little you see that little tang in there right above my finger going in and out. I don't know if that's showing up or not. But so anyway, you leave it there, rotate it to the left of unlock, and and then we'll just set it down in here. So again, the spring sits, rests over that screw that we just put on there and snug down. Oh, that tab is gonna, when it pops out, it's gonna have to get down into this groove here. Um, sometimes you have to not go all the way in and you just give it a couple little twists. See how it's got this, this space right here? So it doesn't engage. It'll engage when it's touching here and it'll engage when it's touching here, but not here. So when you're transitioning between those, Sometimes it'll just spin like this. So sometimes what you need to do is engage it with this tip, just the tip, and um, you can just kind of feel it out. And when it, there you go, once it starts to set in, then you can rotate it over to the, to the fork lock position. Once you're there, all the way down, and while holding it down, I'm going to, there you go. You heard that, I, I clicked it to unlock and pulled the key. And now it's caught in that groove. And there we go. Power on. So, looking good. So now I'm going to go ahead and try to put the uh, radio mount in there. Um, and slide it up underneath. And using the little plastic keepers that were in there, I'm just going to secure it. that I would make this a two-man job um, that other man being my wife who helps me with everything um, but since she's not here I'm gonna go ahead and try to thread this myself I hope I don't regret it I'm just gonna thread all the cables and wires through the hole The behemoth of a bundle. Of course, protecting the fender with the rag and now watching the leading edges of the fairing so that they don't make undesirable contact with any part of the motorcycle. And then sliding in. Okay, once the bundle is through. Bolts here is one of my main concerns. Those and the uh, mounts that are next to the, the blinkers here. It's to be on there better, so here we go. And this is where the everything that we did. And the video is going to come in very handy. And the still pictures, still photos I took so I can see how all this goes. Get my zip ties back where they, back where they belong. Okay, so in putting the radio in, I'm finding that the, uh, the rubber gasket that goes right around just behind the front face. And um, you can see it right here. It goes around. And so I'm having a little bit of trouble getting it to slide smoothly into the opening here so um, I thought you know I'd take a little bit of hand soap and just just very lightly soak the edge of it because then it'll dry up and it'll be fine um, that's what I'd recommend that's kind of what I'm going to do just like a soapy water solution okay so I learned something uh, putting these blinkers on there's a left and a right 
So if you look at that number inside there, at the very end it says RP1. That's the right. The other one has an L there. They do slightly make them angle up if you uh, switch them around. All right, so there it is. It is back together. Fairing is on. Reverse the procedure. I'm taking it off. Uh, followed the same procedure I used in the other video uh, for the headlight replacement. Hung it on the hooks, made sure the wires were out of the way. Made sure that the outside tangs here, uh, or that the, the outer fairing tangs were um, on the inside of the inner fairing tangs. You'll see that in the other video. Um, got my six screws in there and uh, my blinkers on um, the correct side. And so, a new looking bike. Totally different look, that's for sure. Gonna take me some getting used to.